This presentation focuses on the conditioner of the Zamboni ice resurfacing machine. We will discuss both the function and the maintenance of the conditioner components which apply to most of the conditioners manufactured by the Zamboni company. Before we review the function and maintenance of the conditioner, we would like to focus on safety. Machine operators and maintenance people must familiarize themselves with the cautions and warnings contained in the Zamboni ice resurfacer operating instructions and service manual. Contemporary machines have detailed instructions in the manuals which accompany the machines upon delivery and on the factory installed warning labels. Mailings of similar labels and instructions such as these are sent to known owners of older units. Warning labels and safety instructions are available at no charge, so if your machine has lost or had its safety labels painted over, please contact the Zamboni company for replacements. Conditioner guard kits featuring safety guards such as those seen here are available for all current and many older Zamboni machine models. These guards are designed to provide additional protection from augers and moving parts. For more information or to order a kit for your machine, contact your Zamboni authorized distributor or Zamboni customer service. It is critical that anyone working on the resurfacer exercise caution at all times. Never perform any maintenance or service on the machine without first turning the machine off and removing the key. Be sure that the conditioner is properly supported before working on or reaching underneath it. In addition, everyone should familiarize themselves with the part of the resurfacer they intend to service prior to doing the work. During this presentation, we will review the conditioner's parts and their respective functions, as well as the systems and parts which interact closely with or within the conditioner. This model shows the relative shape and location of the parts that support and adjust the position of the blade. To shave properly, the blade must be sharp. The blade should be set at the proper angle and must be securely mounted. The new blade has a width of 5 inches and can be mounted with the line of holes closest to the blade edge. The second blade represents one which has been sharpened many times. It is approximately 3.5 inches wide and because it is less than 4 inches, it must be secured by the line of holes furthest away from the blade edge. It is not recommended to shave with a blade which is less than 3 inches wide. This illustration shows a new blade with the mounting bolts in the front holes. With a 4 inch blade, you must move the mounting bolts to the rear set of holes. When the blade is ground down to a width of 3 inches, it has outlived its usefulness. Always handle the cutting blade with extreme care as it can cause injury whether sharp or dull. Always use proper protective equipment. Blade changing assistant devices such as the one seen here can reduce and may even eliminate the need for direct contact with the blade during the blade installation and blade changing process. Contact your Zamboni authorized distributor or Zamboni customer service for additional information. The blade is supported by the blade holding bar. The model shows the parts in the conditioner that change the position of the bar and the blade in relation to the ice. This model represents the left blade adjustment screw and the center adjusting screw. The right screw is identical to the left, but is not shown. The side adjustments are independent of each other. If you raise the left side of the blade, you do not raise the right side at the same time. These side adjustments also raise and lower the blade without appreciably changing the angle of the blade. The blade angle is determined by rotating the center adjustment screw with the hand wheel next to the operator. Proper shaving requires a sharp blade, one sharpened at between 24 degrees and 26 degrees. It should be set at approximately 10 degrees between the blade and the ice surface. Any time a blade is changed, whether you are installing a wide blade or a thin one, it is essential to use both the side and center adjustments to arrive at the 10 degree angle. When changing blades, follow this sequence. Bolt the blade securely on the blade bar. Set the 10 degree angle with the center hand wheel. Set the blade ends level with the runners on both sides with the side adjustment screws. Repeat steps 2 and 3 again until the 10 degree angle remains constant. Before going on to the ice, raise the blade about 2 turns with the center hand wheel. If your resurfacing results show ripples or waves in the ice, you may consider replacing a heavily used thin blade with a newer, wide blade, attaching it by the front line of holes. As the model illustrates, the blade has about twice the support area against the bar when attached by the front line of holes versus when it is secured by the back row. In many instances, this can mean the difference between a smooth surface and a wavy or rippled ice sheet. We have demonstrated the interaction between the blade and the various parts that position it. 
the fulcrum arm supports the end of the blade holding bar. Once the blade has been set, it is necessary to keep both the blade holding bar and the fulcrum arm from moving to avoid blade chatter. To accomplish this, we rely on the hammer arm, the heavy leaf spring, and to a lesser degree, on the coil spring connected to the rear of the conditioner. While these parts require minimal maintenance, they must be in good working condition for proper resurfacing performance. Now that you are familiar with the inner workings of the conditioner, we will illustrate some of the maintenance or repairs the specific components might require. The conditioner frame is the largest component and it is essential that it be as straight and as free of rust as possible. The damaged left side plate on this conditioner frame and its runner need to be straightened. The side plate in this instance may have been caught on something resulting in the damage. It must be realigned if the conditioner is to provide the support the blade needs. For this type of repair, contact your Zamboni authorized distributor to perform the service. The side plate on the right shows the proper angle. The runner should be straight with the exception of the front few inches. This illustration shows that in the case of the runner, the front three inches should be raised approximately five eighths of an inch. The front three and a half inches of the side plate should be bent inward one inch as shown in this diagram of the top view. While observing the runners, you should check the condition of the bottom of the runners. Since the ice itself does little to wear down the bottom of the runners, this type of wear is usually caused by an operator dragging the snow off the ice and onto an adjacent concrete surface. This illustration shows the front of the conditioner contacting the concrete which will wear the front of the runners thin. While this procedure saves the operator a bit of snow shoveling, it may result in costly runner repair or even replacement of the entire conditioner frame. There are items which support the blade that require maintenance. It is important that the underside of the blade holding bar be checked for rust or foreign matter. Either one can prevent the blade from pulling flat against the holding bar. On the blade holding bar, as on other components where rust might be present, periodic cleaning and painting is recommended. The blade should come from the sharpener and be stored until installation in a clean scabbard. To check the components at the ends of the blade holding bar, Remove the leaf spring by loosening the leaf spring set screw. You can see the function of the spring by putting pressure on the underside of the blade holding bar. The blade tends to push away from the ice resulting in difficulty when trying to move the bar in the direction the blade would be pushing. After loosening the set screws and removing the spring, it is possible to move the bar. Because of the great amount of upward force that the blade exerts, it is crucial that the set screws on the leaf springs are well tightened. Note the shape of the leaf spring before and after it is tightened by the set screw. This illustration shows about one inch in the bow when the spring has no pressure on it. This illustration reflects the proper setting with no more than one half inch when the spring is tightened. The spring must be capable of flexing so it can maintain a constant pressure on the blade holding bar. Ongoing exposure to moisture around the conditioner can take its toll on many components including the leaf spring. Rusty springs can act like solid pieces of steel. If the spring does not flex back to its original shape, it needs to be replaced. The life of new springs can be extended by keeping them free of rust and lubricated. With the leaf springs removed, the various arms on the inside of the conditioner should be checked for freedom of movement. Possible problems include worn bushings and dirt and other debris. A buildup of foreign material can limit the movement of the adjustment arms. All debris should be removed by concentrated flushing or, if necessary, through a complete disassembly and cleaning. The stainless steel adjustment screws are basically the same for the sides as the center, except that the center screw adapts to a universal joint. The new parts rotate easily. To maintain ease of turning, check that the threads on the screw and brass nut are in good condition and keep the threads lubricated with a quality waterproof grease. An important component in this area is the bearing at the top of the stainless screw. If this bearing becomes rusty or the screw is bent, it must be replaced. Now that we have reviewed the importance of having a sharp blade and the proper maintenance of blade holding components, we will discuss the snow conveying system. This illustration and the animation which follows it shows the function of the augers or conveyors. Please note the transfer from the horizontal auger to the vertical auger to the snow tank. 
A major conveyor component in the conditioner is the horizontal auger. The auger must be straight. The most common areas requiring repair are the two shafts at the ends and the center slinger paddle. The shaft end of an auger may become worn and scored. This is most often caused by not tightening the set screw on the auger bearings. Depending on your machine model, these bearings may be accessed from within the conditioner or from the exterior of the conditioner through the side plate. The two set screws should be frequently checked and tightened if necessary. Properly tightened, these bearings keep the auger from moving side to side and also eliminate shaft rotation in the bearing collar. Rotation in the bearings will cause wear on the shaft over time, so be sure to keep the set screws tight. Bent auger paddles can cause poor performance. New paddles which are flat are much more effective at delivering the snow into the vertical conveyor. This bent condition may be caused by the horizontal auger hitting an object or even the bottom of the vertical conveyor housing. The following explanation and illustrations may help you avoid this problem. To maximize the transfer of snow between the horizontal auger and the vertical conveyor, the distance between these components is kept to a minimum by design. On older models, this clearance is eliminated when the conditioner begins to be lifted or when the front wheels of the machine drop to a lower surface without raising the conditioner. If the horizontal auger is still rotating under either of these conditions, the auger paddle may contact the vertical auger housing with enough force to bend them. Whether you're operating an older or newer machine, it is always good practice to turn the augers off and be sure they stop rotating before leaving the ice or lifting the conditioner. Damaged auger paddles should be straightened and the operator should be instructed on the proper operation of the machine. The condition of the bearings should be monitored as they are exposed to the constant moisture present in and around the conditioner. Proper lubrication can help offset this and it is recommended that a good quality grease be used to lubricate the bearings weekly. At the same time, the condition of each bearing should be checked by lifting the horizontal auger and trying to move the shaft up and down. If you have movement in this direction, the bearing may be shot or the shaft is worn. In either case, the auger needs to be removed so the repairs or replacements can be made. If the shafts do not move up and down, check for end-to-end -end movement. If there is movement, tighten the bearing set screws as mentioned earlier. Other components continually exposed to water include the sprockets and drive chain for the conveyor. Removal of the chain guard should be done monthly to lubricate the parts and to check the various components behind the guard. With the machine off and the key removed, take off the chain guard to reveal the sprockets in the chain. It is relatively easy to remove the guard if you do it regularly. Seizure of the countersunk screws securing the guard is not uncommon where they are rarely removed. Such a condition can be disastrous if you have a chain or sprocket failure and you cannot remove the guard. Check the sprocket and pulley alignment, as well as the tension of the chain and belt. Look for undue wear on the various components and check for any movement. Follow this by adjusting the water pump to tighten the drive belt. Grease the chain and sprockets before reinstalling the guard. Do not start the machine until this and all other guards are replaced. Now that we've reviewed the blade, conditioner, and conveyor system, we will discuss the wash water system and the water pump. The machine's operating instructions contain information on the wash water system as well as directions for its use. The wash tank contains approximately 80 gallons of water. The water valve controls the flow of water to the distribution pipe. The squeegee pushes the water forward as the machine moves. The water pump vacuums up the water from in front of the squeegee and returns it to the wash tank. The dirty wash water should be frequently drained and the tank refilled with fresh water. The frequency depends on the condition of the water. A plug is located at the bottom of the tank to allow for easy drainage. In addition to regular draining and periodic flushing, machines without a plastic wash tank should have their wash tank cleaned and coated with rust resistant paint once a year. Make sure that the wash tank screen is in good condition and that it is flushed periodically. The water control valve should shut tight in the closed position to prevent dripping and requires little maintenance. A simple check can be made of the distribution pipe while the tank is being flushed and the conditioner is raised. Open the control valve and check that an even and ample stream of water pours onto the floor from both ends of the pipe. The squeegee should be checked to ensure that it isn't torn and that it is trimmed to fit snugly against the end of the conditioner. 
A sizable gap between the squeegee and the runner allows water leakage. Check that the entire length of the squeegee contacts the floor when the conditioner is resting on a level surface. If the squeegee is pushing the water forward and the suction pipe is located correctly, the water pump will remove the water from the ice surface. The suction pipe should sit about one quarter inch off of the ice. It will not work properly if it is too close to the ice or too far above it. The new conditioner shows the hose extension that makes this height adjustment quite easy. The condition of the water pump is important and involves several elements. If the water pump is not functioning, a faulty impeller is most often the problem. The self-priming pump works well and should provide reliable service as long as it has water in it when operating. Because its internal operation is based on friction and is water lubricated, the rubber impeller can fail in just minutes if it is run dry. Impeller replacement is not a difficult task, but it is a needless expense that can be avoided if the operator is careful. To access the impeller, remove the five screws on the faceplate. Pliers or two screwdrivers can be used to remove the old impeller. Rubber debris inside the pump should be scraped out carefully prior to installing a new impeller. To avoid a burnt impeller, the driver should frequently check that the water is pumping back into the wash tank whenever the water pump is on. While replacing the impeller and the pump is open, take a moment to check the cam and other internal parts for wear. If these parts are worn, rebuilding kits are available from your Zamboni authorized distributor or Zamboni customer service. Following reassembly, check the electrical operation of the pump. An easy way to check the clutch is to turn the machine's ignition switch to the on position without starting the machine. Then turn the water pump switch off and on several times. Each time you should hear a clicking sound in the pump clutch. If you do not, check for a proper connection. If this is not the problem, check that there is power to the pump and if necessary have the coil on the clutch tested. These are the components of the wash water system. When properly maintained and used, the wash water system is an important function which contributes to the overall quality of the ice surface. Following the shaving and washing operations, we have the fresh water application. The primary components for this operation are the water control valve, the distribution pipe, and the towel. The valve must turn freely and close tightly. There should be a good flow through all of the holes on the distribution pipe. If there is not, take the caps off of the ends and flush the pipe thoroughly. A towel in good condition will result in a better ice surface. Proper maintenance of the towel requires the following. While stopped on the ice, lift the towel from the ice or it may freeze to the surface and tear. Removing the towel bar after each resurfacing may help to extend towel life. The Zamboni Company offers a high-performance synthetic towel with a significantly longer towel life. The towel does not shrink or develop strands. The synthetic material provides better water transfer to the ice, resulting in a smoother ice surface. The conveyor and down pressure system are critical to the resurfacing operation. Operators must turn off the machine, remove the key, and wait for all movement to stop before cleaning or making any adjustments or repairs. Be sure that the bearings at the top and bottom of the vertical conveyor are kept well greased and that the bearing set screws are tight. Make sure that the snow breaker slides freely and that the spring is in good working order. Older machines should have their pulley alignment and belt tightness checked periodically. All guards, shields, and warning labels must be in place before resuming operation. Now that we have reviewed the water and conveyor systems, we will discuss down pressure. The down pressure system is one of the most important parts of the shaving operation. If the machine is not shaving well and you have checked the blade as mentioned earlier, look at the following items. All bushings related to the lift bar should be checked for wear. A little wear in each of them can add up to a lot of movement at the conditioner. Lubricate all grease fittings at the same time you lubricate the conveyor bearings. Check the condition of the down pressure springs. They can be deformed if the operator pushes the conditioner down while there are blocks under the runners. The spring should have about 3 quarter inch rise in the center if laid on a flat surface. If less than a quarter inch remains, they should be replaced. When reinstalling the leaf springs, the conditioner should be lowered to about one inch from the ground. Next, finger tighten the set screws and then add between one and a half to three turns, depending on your machine model. Tighten the screw as much as possible without making contact with the horizontal bearing mount. Follow this by locking the set screws with the jam nuts. 
A machine with a sharp blade and proper down pressure improves the shaving process by adding evenly distributed weight to the conditioner, forcing the blade to cut smoothly and preventing the runners from lifting up off of the ice. Keep in mind that your machine may have variations and differences from the references provided in this program. The program is a general overview of the steps to properly maintain your Zamboni machine's conditioner and should not be considered as a comprehensive guide to all conditioner maintenance. This information, combined with the operating instructions and service manual originally delivered with your machine, should provide an additional resource to educate the operators and service personnel in contact with your Zamboni ice resurfacing machine. For additional information or to obtain replacement reference materials, please contact your Zamboni Authorized Distributor or Zamboni Customer Service.